Greetings ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one. Anything can be a weapon. Straw. Written by Denomia. I need a weapon to kill someone that's impossible to kill. A patron said as he entered the seediest arms store in the arm of the galaxy. If you want someone who has hard to kill dead, you hire a human assassin. They can kill using anything as a weapon. Grub Ra replied was the well-dressed Corlillian now in front of him. Nonsense, you cannot kill someone with just anything. No, but a human assassin can use things that would not normally be a weapon to kill someone in the appropriate circumstances, and they are very creative with their methods. Let me give you an example. You know who the Pablu are? Of course, they are the richest species in the galaxies. Yes, but do you know about them? No, not much, just that they are a pharmaceutical industry. As you said, they are the richest species in the galaxy and as such have the best bodyguards. They are basically gi giant protozoans, you know, sack full of fluid with several pseudopods for movements. That fluid is the most potent aphrodisiac in the galaxy. Exfuk was the excrement is made up of 80% of it. They filter it and sell it for a fortune. Who? If I'd known. Anyway, someone wanted one of them dead for some reason and hired a human to do the job. This human found its mark at one of those no weapons of any kind club, including no claws, fangs, or horns. Humans can enter since they do not have any of those and frequent these types of bars often. So the hitman entering was normal. It walked up to the bar and ordered some kind of icy slush drink and asked for a straw, saying something about freezing its brain without it. It takes the drink over to the booth next to the mark and sits down with its back to it. Now this creative killer takes the straw out and rolls the end closed to make something like a point. Squeezes the straw and puts its thumb over the other end. Then it reaches behind itself and in between the seats through the tail space and jabs it into the poor blast's rear and lets go. The poor blue do not have nerves so it did not feel it and the bodyguards did not see it. When the human let go of the straw there was a slight vacuum and it created a siphon that started draining the fluid. By the time the Pablo realized what was going on, it had lost 40% of its fluid, and when the bar patrons realized what was going on, there was a massive rush of beings trying to get some of the gallons of aphrodisiac on the floor. By the time the bodyguards got to the Pablo out of the frenzy and to the hospital, it was too late. Sounds like the human is the weapon I need. How do I get in touch with one? I don't know myself, but here, take this number. He replied as he's handed him a plastic card. They can put you in touch with someone. Thanks, the Corlillian replied when he turned towards the door to leave. One word of advice. Don't screw over a human assassin. The only thing they like more than killing is revenge killing. End of story. Story number two. Just a figure of speech written by Drake Greich. The first universal translator that was given to the human people was elegant, well-designed, and nearly entirely useless. The problem, it seemed, was that the translator interpreted what it assumed you, as a species, would be attempting to say if you were to repeat the same meaning as it was said to you. It had a complex neural interface that could remotely read the chemical and electrical signals inside of a brain to determine the meaning of a given statement and the species that had initially designed it was so profoundly technologically advanced that they had literally decided, as an entire culture, to download their minds into a computer system and give up on living in the physical world altogether. That was 120,371 years before humans made first contact. 
Basically, it was a genius invention that had worked so well for so long that no one had an idea that it could malfunction, much less predict why. The problem, it turns out, was human peculiarity. You see, in every other intelligent, space-wearing species, communication evolves in a direct, useful way. Like humans, it starts with a species is barely intelligent, evolves into more complex forms of communication over time. Many involve dialects, often involves development of writing and recordings. But in literally every other case aside from humanity, it is 100% accurate and unsarcastic and idiom-free. That presented a significant problem then, when the translator attempted to contextualize the meaning of a human phrase, filter it through its ability to read the human and produce the correct intended phrase. The first time it was used by a human, the issues were fortunately not obvious. In a diplomatic discussion related to first contact, the humans avoided sarcasm, idioms, and common turns of phrase. Apparently, there were a few issues, but the humans were unaware of them, as the Pergothan ambassador simply assumed the human had intended to say, Thank you for this opportunity, and I hope that there is no angry bear to maul you and the spacecraft. When, in fact, the human had meant to say, Thank you for this opportunity, and I wish you good fortune on your journey home. By the time the rest of the galaxy got to know the humans better, it became more and more obvious that the translators were not working. Well, obvious to everyone except the humans. The humans, amusingly, had not had any sign that they was anything amiss. They simply believed that translators worked as expected, and that, for reasons they did not understand, many aliens must simply have odd reactions to common statements, due to cultural peculiarities. After all, when a human was asked to explain the nature of human bonding, she invoked the idea of love. And when the aliens reacted with confusion, she simply believed that they must not have such a word, or such an emotional reaction, or perhaps even any form of chemical in their brains to facilitate pair bonding. The reality was that the aliens did, in fact, understand the concept, but were simply confused about why she measured love, as the translator made it sound like she did. Instead of saying, I love my husband and my children in different ways, though we use the same word, it is wholly different. I love my husband passionately and deeply, but both he and I love our children more than we can ever say. I simply a different word. The translator picked it up what she stated and somehow turned it into, I love my husband and my children in very different ways, though we use the same word, it is wholly different. That part, at least, was translated correctly. But when she continued, the translator somehow said, I would experience the greatest number of attacks by killer bees for my husband being injured badly. But both he and I love our children enough to be exposed to hornets, as well as the aforementioned bees. Understandably, the human walked away surprised that the aliens had been so perplexed when she explained herself. While the aliens were confused and trying to understand why humans so often used oddly specific comparisons that seemed to make no logical sense in their speech. This came as a head fairly quickly, fortunately. No misunderstandings led to a conflict or death, though quite a few humans were shunned and treated oddly by aliens who assumed that, uh, spacefaring or not, humanity must be one of the mad races whose intelligence evolved in such a way to make them, as a species, borderline insane. And when one alien admitted as much to a human scientist he was working with, the scientists aggressively pressed him for answers, which led to the discovery of what exactly the issue with the translator was. It turned out, in the end, that humanity were sole inventors of idioms. Sarcasm existed in rare corners of the galaxy, though most races considered it just lying but pretending not to lie, which made it very unpopular. Contradictions in words were equally rare, as most species had not been so impatient that they would simply stick multiple words together and declare it a whole new word. But the translator had no problems with contractions. No, it turned out that the translator simply couldn't comprehend the idea of idiomatic speech. The machine managed to easily and correctly translate at least most idioms when it heard them, 
a dime a dozen was translated as a large number for a small cost, and break a leg was, fortunately, interpreted correctly as good luck, instead of some sort of demanded threat. Admittedly, there were some idioms that did not seem to translate properly, such as a Cuban man referring to death as the bald one, the cultural idiom, and the aliens being told, baldness approaches you, beware, and cut him or her some slack became, drop them from a great height with a rope. But in general, the translator was actually quite capable of translating the underlying meaning of the idiom correctly. But because the machine interfaced from a distance with the human mind when they spoke to better determine the intended meaning of what they said, it seemed to often take what they were saying and attempted to reverse engineer the statement into a human idiom. See you later, for example, would interface with the human's mind and find a prominent example of one of their childhood memories and translate into, I will see you before I gain see whatever the childhood memory was. This meant that every time a human said goodbye, using that phrasing, the aliens had been greeted with a whole slew of strange and oddly specific imagery from whichever human that they greeted. In other cases, it's nice to see you, which is not an idiom, even if it is often a lie, translated into, I'm aroused by your presence, or seeing you reminds me of kittens, or something equally positive. The problem, as it is called, was that every species in the history of the known galaxy had evolved language as a tool, a utility to communicate, and as such they had never, in the millennia had followed, diluted the clarity of their speech by putting in odd shortcut phrases that might be misinterpreted simply because they seemed to make sense if you thought about them, or were references to culturally well-known ideas which is what the humans described idioms as to the Galactic Council when they tried explaining that their species required additional assistance in fixing the universal translators that were currently in use. Humans alone had minds that naturally craved the sort of abstraction and mental gymnastics that were required to have a conversation where a massive proportion of what was said, in essence, was a reference or a statement that did not mean exactly what the words said. A human would call it a day when they were wiped out or bite the bullet and keep working even if they felt as tired as a dog. The sheer number of idiomatic phrases, figures of speech and cultural metaphors that they used in everyday conversations meant that idioms had interpretive language was, in some ways, a natural part of the human mind. After much debate amongst the rest of the council and several days of humans using more accurate written translator they were in the process of trying to use to show the aliens what they meant to say and compare it to what was translated, they got their point across. It didn't hurt that the humans, in an attempt to be able to communicate their sincerity and frustration, had used a few varied human idioms to uh, unintentionally insult the council while they debated. After all, the head of the side arguing the humans was just crazy, and the translator probably simply worked correctly while the human insanity prevented him from realizing it. They knew that there might actually be something wrong when the humans referred to him as uh, looking like the backside of a vulture, which was, in fact, a perfect and entirely accurate translation of the Finnish idiom to refer to something as unattractive but managed to convince the leader that perhaps they might want to consider helping the humans with their translation issues to avoid further insults. And so, though the race was created, the original translators was long gone, or at least living only in the space-sparing ship supercomputers somewhere far away. The Council organized a group of technologically advanced beings with specializations in language, mental interfaces, or knowledge of long-gone race and their history. They worked tirelessly, and several months later came back to the humans proud to say that they could upgrade and update the existing communicators with a simple fix, effectively a sort of software patch, and fix the problem. And they did, which is when the Galactic Council realized how important it was to have considered that perhaps humans should have been on the team to redesign the translators because they now were exactly accurate, even when translating idioms and common turns of phrase. 
which is why, to this day, when a human is spotted in a bar, dock, or far-off planet for a vacation, you will hear a great deal of huffing from the various other inhabitants, and quite a bit of the human smiling apologetically. While the rest of the galaxy feels uh, not entirely unfairly that humans are using some sort of untranslatable secret language to tease or mock or make fun, and even as they smile and try to diffuse the situation, expect to hear the human repeatedly explain, sorry to confuse, it's just, uh, well, it's a figure of speech. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.